Hello and welcome to Up The Villa podcast. This is our Premier League season predictions going over the winners of the league, top four, five to seven, Villa's league position, FA Cup winners, League Cup winners, top scorer, top assist, and the list goes on. So we want you guys, when we reach those certain topics, to hammer the live chat with your predictions on what's going to happen this season. But something big that has happened today on the Villa front, Aston Villa and Steven Gerrard has named John McGinn as the captain for the foreseeable future. Um, I think we all saw and knew that there was going to be a new captain and it was going to be out of Mings, McGinn, Martinez, or maybe one of the new lads that has come in. But it has been John McGinn. So, Hannah... What are your thoughts on John McGinn as Aston Villa captain? Yeah, like you say, I think even when Gerard joined us last uh, last winter, there was kind of murmurings that he was going to give us give us a shake up in the captain department. Um, and that time has come now. I get why it didn't happen when he first came in because you know disrupting the dressing room when you're trying to come in and stable the ship. Um, you know, I, I understood that. Uh, I was slightly surprised with the decision. I suspected Mings would perhaps uh, have the captaincy taken away or given to someone else uh, purely on form. But John McGinn was slightly surprising. I, I expected it to be Emmy Martinez, if anyone, but obviously he's got the vice captaincy. I think John McGinn, um, where he really stars in this team, I suppose, is that I think he's just a likeable character and if you're looking for someone to boost morale and to really uplift the dressing room, he's probably the person to do that. So I completely understand the decision from that perspective. I think my kind of passion came into it was when um, there was the full list of captaincies and we have a so-called club captain which uh, was given to Ashley Young. Again, he's a veteran, he's you know re- very well respected at the club. So Again, understandable, but with the things Tyrone Mings does for our club, he's an ambassador, he's the voice, he's the mouthpiece a lot of the time for everything that is good with this football club. I was slightly upset that he had nothing to show for it because I think if anyone should represent our club, it should be him, even if that is just as this club captain, whatever that stands for. He attends the events, he engages with fans, he does stuff with the foundation, he's just set up a charity uh, kind of fundraiser with the Ghana Lions. So I was disappointed, um, but I think it indicates that Mings is perhaps no longer a mainstay in this side, but John McGinn might be. Um, Again, that it's perhaps surprising because we might we might have suspected McGinn would come in and out of this midfield this season after we've recruited. Um, but, I mean, can you complain too much? It was always going to be out, out the select few of our players. So, um, I really like John McGinn, so I'm biased in that sense. But it shouldn't affect the playing style. It shouldn't affect too much. So, I suppose we just get behind him again. Yeah, and one thing that I would predominantly take away from, um, you know, Ming sort of not being captain anymore is hopefully he can focus on the playing side of things because, um, you know, he does have a lot of critics and I think sometimes it's over the top. But if I am being honest, I would say his overall game has sort of regressed over the last year, year and a half slightly. So if he can get sort of back to a really high level in a Villa shirt, then I think it's probably going to have been the biggest and, and, and a big decision from Gerard. So everybody in the chat now, if you can drop a like on this video, it'll help push it out onto the YouTube algorithm. We want you guys to be fully interactive with this episode. So um, we're going to start it off then with the bottom three. So in the chat now, put your bottom three for the Premier League season upcoming. I'll kick it off. And I am going with Bournemouth, Rock Bottom, Fulham, and then I'm going for Leeds to get relegated. Justin, what are you going with? I'm going, Fulham are going to do a Fulham, so they're going to get bottom. Bournemouth, and here's the first shock of the evening. I'm putting, (laughs) 
Let's hope none of them are listening, which I don't think they will be. Wolves to get relegated. Oh my god. Wolves. Are you biting are you biting Justin. them? Just he's on the wind up already. You look at uh, if you look at their form, let, let me just clarify this. Their last eleven games of last season, they won two games. They lost nine, I think, out of eleven. They've lost the managers lost the plot towards the end of the season. They've now lost uh Jimenez for the first two months of the season. He's injured. And I just think they've signed nobody. And I still think there's a good chance Neves is no, going to go. they have signed, um, what's his name, the defender? Yeah, Collins. Collins. Oh, sorry. Yes, Collins. Yes, yes. From Bur- Burn- Burnley, isn't it? I just think there's always one team that gets dragged into it. And if you look at, I was looking at um, the WM, posted a couple of things tonight, and, and one of them was about Wolves. And the Wolves fans underneath, they're all absolutely they're not looking forward to next season. Honestly, they're not. They, they feel that they're, they're not. They're, they're, there's no. Looks like they're signing nobody. There's no even like transfer rumours and nothing for them. It looks like the owners might have pulled the plug on the cash as well. But just it's just an inkling. I, I mean, you know, it's just an inkling. I, 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 I was all in between. I was all in and all between them and Forest. To be honest, I've just got Forest staying up by the skin of the teeth. <laughs> no, I always it. remember when you had uh, me and Luke belly laughing on that one episode when you had an inkling about Coutinho. So, um, I can't write off this Wolves relegation. No. No. <laughs> no, he's got a sixth sense, Justin. See, I have almost got the exact same bottom three as Luke. I've put Fulham bottom, same as Justin. I've got Bournemouth in 19th. And I've got a question mark here because I'm, I'm, I'm stuck between Forest and Leeds for that final spot. I just think Leeds have now lost, you know, too many of their crucial players, Rafinha and, and Phillips leaving. You know, I just, I, I don't back them. So yeah. I'm almost tempted to put Leeds in that spot and, and have Forrest again staying yeah. up by the skin I mean, of the team. The, the reason why I went Leeds is you don't sell two of your best players and two players are integral to the way that they play football. Rafinha got all their goals last season. Phillips in the middle. I know he was injured as well. Buying a load of players, that sinister era, is it? And I just think it's all got to come together. The philosophy of the way in which Leeds are going about playing football, it, it's too erratic. And I know he shored them up at the back, but I just think he has got a monumental job on his hands for them to score goals, to be solid at the back. Um, so that's why I went with Leeds. Ryan? I've gone the same as you, Luke. Um, really? Bit of a slight different order. I've gone Bournemouth bottom. Um, I've gone Leeds nineteenth, and I've gone. It was a toss-up between Brighton and Fulham, but I just think Fulham will do a Fulham. Mitrovic scores like well, I don't know what is it, hundred goals a season in the Championship, then he comes up to the Premier League and gets about two. So <clears throat> the only chance. I see them staying up as if he can really hit it off this time. Um, but apart from that, that's my bottom three. I, I fancy Forrest. I don't know, I just fancy Forrest to come up with good vibes, man. They made some good signings. So yeah, I, fancy I, them. I think the atmosphere is going to be big there. And, yeah. and he's a real good coach. I think he's a, I think he's a real good manager there. So, um, yeah, I, I'm tipping them to just do a little bit. A little yeah. bit. I, I also think you, you look at you know we've studied this today we've got all this ready and and there isn't for me there's not a lot between the bottom what one two three four five six seven eight nine, bottom ten sides I think any of them can get dragged in this year and I've, I'd I'd include Brighton Southampton Everton Brentford Forest Wolves Leeds Bournemouth Fulham. I think any of them can get dragged in. And I think, yeah. do you know what? I think Leicester as well. I, I don't think Leicester will get down, but I definitely see Leicester in the bottom half next season with, with what's happening there. We're, 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 going on, we're now going to be tagged up in some Wolves Facebook group now, getting absolute hammered. <laughs> Justin <Yeah>. is. <laughs> Justin, we're getting absolutely hammered somewhere. Right, my next door neighbour's a Wolves fan, so I'll just, <laughs> I'll just play him the video after. I thought I heard some knocking in the background. <laughs> you <laughs> just so now come into the season. Yes, right. Oh, it's it's gonna be degrees. They're going to uh, cut Justin's internet connection in a minute. <laughs> He's got exactly the same bottom three as me. Walls full and Bournemouth. Good lad. Well, right. So let's go top four, Villa fans. <laughs> in the comments section there, watch your top four. I have gone for a little bit something different. 
Um, I, I think there's going to be a few twists at the top of this table this season, apart from the top one. So I have gone for Manchester City winning the Premier League, Spurs second, Liverpool third, and Arsenal fourth. Justin, what you gone for? Uh, City to walk it. And then, difficult then. I, I think I've put Liverpool in second, but I've put next to it just about. Because I think they've just about got enough to hold on second. But I think Spurs, Chelsea and Arsenal are going to push him close. But I've got Spurs for third and Chelsea for fourth. Yeah, I, I think Spurs are going to do decent, to be fair. The signings but, that they've made, yeah. can't they very- yeah, very similar to the bottom sort of field. I think there's a, there's an argument to make for probably five teams this year to, to fight it out for them four places. Hannah, what are you going for? Yeah, I'm similar. I've got Man City and Liverpool in the same top two. Um, and my third and fourth are Spurs and Arsenal. I think hmm. I was I was tossing it up, who's going to get third. I have put Spurs. I think their recruitment has been very good. But Arsenal have, have signed well as well. Um, I just... I'm not sure he will he will edge it. I think Conte is probably going to be the better coach. But again, I, I, do you know what? I'm 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 hating doing this because I'm just thinking, come end of the season, how wrong am I going to be on so many of these opinions? But we're going it's, with what we're second going with the gut feeling. That, yeah, um, yeah. I just can't, I can't bear the humiliation come next May. But I think Spurs will edge it. Um, that should be quite a tasty one with with the local rivalry. Um, but as we say, Chelsea have they have they got enough in the tank? I mean, they've they've got rid of uh, a bit of dead weight, but they've also lost Rudiger, who I really rated. So mm. we shall see if Chelsea have enough to um, to wriggle their way back in because they sort of dropped off quite quite drastically, didn't they, last season? After everyone kind of picked them to challenge for the top uh, top two spots. So um, that's my four. I don't know, Ryan, if you've got much to add. I am the same as you, Hannah. I've gone City to win the title, <clears throat> Liverpool, Spurs in third place and Arsenal to sneak fourth over Chelsea. Um, I know Chelsea have brought Sterling, but you know, they've lost Rudiger and Christiansen, haven't they? So... I don't know, just the change of manage, change of ownership and stuff. I don't know. I just feel it all feels a little bit disjointed at Chelsea at the minute. Uh, where I feel like Arsenal and Spurs have, you know, had, you know, they had good seasons last year, and and they're ready to go. They're ready to go. They've brought well. They brought early as well. Um, you know, Chelsea. They're probably still looking at bringing a couple more in. So um, yeah, I just feel like the, the rest of them are more better placed at this moment in time. So jump into that top four. Yeah. I, I sort of feel like Man City are head and shoulders above absolutely everybody. And I just feel like Spurs have closed that gap to Liverpool a little bit. Yeah. That's what I think. And I think Chelsea have dropped off a bit and Arsenal and Spurs have have, have closed it. That That's that's my I sort think, of thinking. I think the problem Spurs are going to have is, is they got Champions League this year, haven't they, as well? So they've got to try and marry up a Champions League campaign with what everybody sort of thinks now is going to be a sustained attack on maybe even the title. I mean, I think that might be pushing it a bit, but I think they're definitely going to be up there in the top four. But can they sustain a, a good go at a top two or three finish in the league and a go at the Champions League as well? It's difficult, <clears> isn't it? But I also think Chelsea are in the market for another one or two top centre-halves. I know there's lots of rumours going around. So I just think Chelsea can nick that fourth. Uh, Neil's put a more realistic one then City, <laughs> Liverpool, Spurs and Arsenal um, Right, so I'm I'm not going next on this one I'm going to pass this one over to Hannah to start with uh, What are you going with? Villa fans as well 5th to 7th 5th to 7th Right So uh, as alluded to I have got Chelsea in 5th in fifth, in fifth spot Again, I was sort of um and ahhing about putting United there I just think they're going to have a bit of a redemption arc this season with the new coach, with some recruitment. I mean, I know they're still faffing about with uh, their number seven, but um, I, I put Chelsea in the fifth spot. I just think they probably have got enough to edge United who are going to be... Re- they're in a rebuilding phase, aren't they? They're massively going to have to start from scratch with Ten Hag. So 
got United in sixth um, and West Ham in seventh. I, I wasn't sure about West Ham. I kind of ummed and ahed about can they sustain and continue on their upwards trajectory? Because it wasn't a long ago when we were fighting relegation again a, a few years ago, they were actually down there with us. And I feel like mm. a lot of people forget that. And, you know, David Moyes brilliantly has, has turned it around. But is it sustainable? I'm not sure because they've got a good squad. But is it, you know, year in, year out, Europe squad? I don't know. Um, but I've put them in seventh because I just really rate David Moyes and I think he will, he, he's consistent. Um, so he will whip them into shape and, and manage to, you know, keep them around that uh, European, European spot. But I feel like with all of these, there's someone who can infiltrate and, you know, switch it up a bit. But those are my three um, in whatever order they may finish. I don't know, but I'm, I'm pretty confident with those. I'm going to reluctantly come out now from the sofa and put my little prediction on the line after uh, seeing what some of you have been putting in the chat. So mine is fifth place, Chelsea. Um, sixth place, Manchester United. I still think they're going to have an absolute stinker. Uh, and I'm going to go in seventh place, Aston Villa. You love it, don't you? Um, yeah, I've gone Villa in seventh. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Justin? I've gone Arsenal fifth, Man United sixth, and Aston Villa in seventh. Of course he has. <laughs> <laughs> As Ryan got as much wishful thinking, I don't know. It was a toss-up between us and and West Ham, to be honest, for that seventh spot. Um, I'm writing off, maybe at my peril, Leicester and Wolves, obviously, because I've got Wolves to go down. And they're the ones that sort of fought (laughs) for it last year. And the other outsider is Newcastle, isn't it? But apart from that, I think we've got to be up there. I really do. I think this is the year we've got to go for it. I mean, if I'm, going to give you, if I'm going to give you my top 10, right? So yeah. I've got Villa in seventh, which I've put us in a sort of a mini league with a few teams. And like yeah. people have said, there's always that one sort of team. I think West Ham has still got European football, so it's still a lot of games for them. Uh, so I've gone Villa seventh, West Ham eighth, Newcastle ninth, and Palace tenth. Exactly the same as mine. That, that, is, that is the mini little league yeah. that I see us in. So, I mean, there's three Villa fans on this screen have all sort of put seventh down to tenth in the right order, so that we all got. So, uh, that's a bit random. Mm. Roy, what you got yeah. there? I went Chelsea fifth, and then I sort of, like you said, drawn a square around sixth to tenth because I think it's up for grabs. Um, I had Man United at six, West Ham seven, Villa eight, and Newcastle and Palace. Um, West Ham, you've made a good point there, Hannah. Um, sort of reminds you of our time under O'Neill, doesn't it? Where we did sustain like European football and we did sustain that sixth place finish, but we just never really pushed on and eventually we fell away. Now, West Ham have been up there for a couple of seasons. Is this the season where, where they do fall away? Newcastle, they've made a couple of signings, but not what. Really, I was expecting of them, even though they plenty more time to, to buy. Um, I just think it's up for grabs. I just think consistency is key, um, especially with United and West Ham. They're both in Europe. So I think it's a real, real good opportunity with not being in Europe, with a World Cup in between, to get in that mix. I had Palace, Palace bringing up the top 10. So even them, you know, they've got the potential to, you know, no Europe, no distractions as well to get in the mix. So, yeah, Villa 8th, but potentially anywhere between 6th and ninth. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I went for 8th. I thought I thought 7th is just a tiny, tiny bit too far. So, I'll, I'll put us in 8th. I thought oh. that would be a miraculous season if, if we can go from 14th to 8th um, in the space of a few months. So, but, Villa, just look at all, all sorry, them. So, Villa fans in the chat now, just quickly put where you think Villa are going to finish then. Go on, Ryan. I would just think out of all that mini league there, that we've probably bought the best. You know, we've we've yeah. improved our squad better than the rest. Man United having a mare at night trying to get players in. Um West Ham not really improved, have they? Have they bought anybody West Ham? I don't think they have, have they? They bought that um they bought an Italian geezer today, haven't they? 
I, I can't think of his name. Okay, and then Newcastle have owned, you know, Pope's a good signing. Matty Target, we know that he can blow hot and cold. And uh, Butman, so they're not really improved their forward line, have they? You know, they've still got Chris Wood up front that all just went to lump anyway, and they only brought them to damage Burnley. So, um, out of all that, I do think that, yeah, we've improved from last season. I did the same as what you, you, you lot have done, really. So I've done, I've actually split the league into four mini leagues. I know normally you say like top five or top six, but I've got the top five, so Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, City, Spurs. Then the next five, Villa, United, Newcastle, West Ham, Palace. Then I've got Everton, mm-hmm. Leicester, uh, Southampton, Brighton and Brentford. And then Wolves, Fulham, Bournemouth, Leeds and Forest. So I think... To clarify, seventh, I'm being, I am being mega confident and mega hopeful. Probably, I mean, it's, you know, it's the hope that kills you. But out of them, what Ryan's just gone through, I, I think, why can't we compete with the likes of, of Newcastle, West Ham, and Palace? I'm not yeah. saying we. Can, I mean, we're not. We're not saying we're going to be in and amongst Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, City, and Spurs. We're not. That's that's pretty deluded at the moment. That's I'm next saying, season's predictions. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're, we're not <laughs> really saying we can compete with. West Ham, Palace, Newcastle, Man United might be a bit of a push because I, I do sort of think Ten Hag might get a tune out of them this season. But if, if you're telling me now that we can't compete with Newcastle, West Ham, Palace and maybe Leicester if they have a decent season and Brighton, then that, what's the point in starting the season? Yeah. yeah I've got Brighton wrong. at 17 fire. I do, you know, you mentioned one team to drop. I think potentially Brighton. I do like Graham Potter. I think he plays some excellent stuff. But again, possibly they're losing two of their best players in one window. So I think if that cooker air goes, I think they're that's a sign of them being a bit in trouble. But I've got Brighton in the 11th here. I've got them in 11th as well. The one team that I didn't really know where to put. It'd be interesting to see where you've put them, guys. Uh, Everton. I put him in 14th. I wanted to put him a bit higher. 14th. <laughs> yeah, 14th. 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 I, I got 16th here. Yeah. yeah, I just feel that they're having, you know, they're having a bit of mare, isn't I'm they? Well. What, though, Justin, mine in your league must be virtually exactly the same. the same. Yeah. I, I think so. we have got this wavelength. We seem to do it every season, to be okay. fair. Every week. Yeah. And don't forget, there is, there is still a few weeks left of the transfer window, and I think... I think we'll see a few big transfers going through between now and the end of the window, which could easily affect, you know, we've just said Newcastle haven't really done a lot of business that we would expect with the takeover they had. And, you know, what's stopping them going out smashing the cash on three or four top, top sure. players, which, yeah, still which, could, time which, could, in the yeah, which could still push them right up the table. You know, they, they had a phenomenal, like I'm saying about Wolves, their end of the season was woeful. Newcastle's last half of the season was phenomenal. And, you know, we all know what happened to Leicester when they had that amazing end of the season. They they fo- followed up the next season by winning the league. I'm not suggesting Newcastle can do that, but they can definitely compete in the top maybe eight, and especially if they sign two or three really, really good players. So it's, it's still up for grabs. But for me, in my opinion, we are competing from sixth to tenth this season. That's where we should be all season. Yeah, definitely. Villa fans... Drop a like on this video. There's a lot of you watching, so if you can just press like right now, uh, it'll just help push this video out onto YouTube. So we'll now go to FA Cup. Who do we think is going to win the FA Cup? Put that in the comments section down below. And I have gone with Manchester City for this one. Hannah, what are you going with? I've gone with a bit of a classic choice. I've gone with Arsenal. I, I wanted to pick someone a bit different. I thought, oh, I'm pretty bored of Liverpool and Man City winning everything. I, and I mean, I know Arsenal have won the FA Cup, you know, more times than I've had hot dinners, but um, I just fancied them to do something. Um, bit of a rogue choice, but I thought, sod it, if I'm going to have a bit of a cheeky guess, I might as well do it on a cup. <laughs> well, I will have my standard £10 bet on Aston Villa to win the FA Cup, which normally expires on the 8th or 9th of January when we've drawn Man United away. Um, so if if we don't get them in the third round, why not, guys? Why not? Let's get on that green. <laughs> FA Cup final in May. Sun's out. Villa's there. Beat whoever and lift that cup. Let's. I, I, I'm slapping Villa on it. Come on, let's have it. Justin, you backing him up? 
Villa all day long. It's our year. <laughs> our year. I shall keep. I shall keep predicting a Villa winning the FA Cup until we lift that cup. Hundred percent. It's our year this year. And then, what are we going? Oh, sorry. With? sorry. Plus, Gerard has, has already said that they're going to really have a go at the cups this year, which I'm yeah. pleased about. <clears throat> And then what are we going with League Cup then? I've gone with Manchester United for the League Cup. Hannah? Um, I'm kind of feeling a bit bad now that I haven't put Villa for either of these, but I've put Liverpool. Yeah, I just think Liverpool will win at least one trophy this season. Ryan, what are you going for? <laughs> Cup double? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um I'm thinking Tottenham to break their trophy, who do? So, yeah, I'm going to go Spurs for the League Cup. Justin? I'm saying that uh, Man City are going to win everything apart from the FA Cup this year. I think they'll win the Champions League as well. I think City will win the League Cup and I think we'll win the annual the trophy this year. Yeah, I think so too. So let's then go with top scorer in the Premier League and top assist. So put them both in the comment section down below. I have gone for the one that I reckon everyone's going to pick. I've gone yep. for Harlan to be top goal scorer and I've gone for Son to be top assist. Justin? Harland. It's got to be Harland. And... Uh... It's not going to be a popular choice for a top assist. Oh, I'm, I'm going to back you up, mate, if it's what you're thinking of. Jack Grealish. Yeah. He's going to be a top assist. <laughs> because I think he's, I think this now they've let get rid of Sterling, I think he's, he, he's had a year now to settle down. And I think with Haaland up front, I think it's his year to shine now. I yeah. agree. I think he's going to have a, a really good season. I just think, um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, bitter at all so it doesn't really pay me to say it but I just think he'll grow into it now and he'll find his role and, and it will go well yeah. for him Yeah I've gone exactly the same Harland, Harland and Jack Grealish I just Harland's a bit rock and roll isn't he I just feel that them gonna shackles up a bit I think and I think mm. Grealish um, is going to compliment Harland a lot um, you see Go on, Ryan. Sorry, mate. You've seen flashes of it in pre-season. They're a little bit of a link-up and grueling through his driving runs. Don't get me wrong, I was petty. I was petty last season. I didn't want him to win anything. <laughs> but, you know, I'm buried it. I'm at peace with it now. And I, I do wish him well um, until he comes down Villa Park and we can hammer him again. But, uh, yeah, I just I just feel that he's going to he's gonna whoop it this season. Yeah, I was just going to say... I, I, I disagree. I do. I, I, I'm the... On the city sweeping the goals and assists, I have actually got Kane and Son. Kane for goal scorer and Son for assists. Um, I think if Spurs are going to kick on, like we're all predicting them to, it's got to come from Harry Kane. I mean, we saw Son yeah. on fire last season. He got, you know, the most assists, maybe tied with um, Salah. Can't remember. Um, but yeah, I think I think Harry Kane will have a good season. He's going to be fired up for the World Cup, isn't he? So uh, that's my yeah. too. So let's I was just move. Say, sorry, on. Luke, on, on, on the um, on the Harland thing while we're on him, I, I can't remember looking forward to watching a player play live as much as I can't wait to see him play. I really can't. I think he's he's an animal. He's going to be unbelievable. He's a beast, anyway. He's a beast. You watch him be absolutely shite now. You know when and when he hits that ball and it's the back of the net, it just yeah, yeah. slaps that net, doesn't it? It's just yeah, it's just it's a real, you know. Until um, Diego Carlos slaps him down. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> right, let's move it back on to Villa then. So let's go with Villa's player of the season and young player of the season in the comments down below. I have gone for Luca Dean, player of the season. And I've gone for, I'm guessing he surely still qualifies for it, doesn't he? Ramsey as young player. Um, I don't know what age bracket that stops, but um, he's the youngest one in the squad, I think, that can probably win it. So I've gone with Ramsey for that. So, Hannah? I also put Luca Dean, and I'm surprised because I wasn't sure anyone else would agree with me. Um, I just feel like he's going to have a Matty Cash season, uh, like last year when... I mean, we've had two... Uh, Two full-backs, haven't we, in a row that have won player of the season with Target and then Matty Cash. 
I just think he's going to be a really important player for us. I, I think, especially towards the end of last season, when he was had a good run of games and he was fit, uh, he was really influential. I just think he's going to be really good for us, both uh, offensively and defensively. For young player, I, I, obviously I think Ramsey will be the standout because he's you know always in the side now, and I think he's only going to get better. But um, I've put wishful thinking. I've put Archer. Just thinking, hopefully, he'll make the step up unless he goes out on loan, um, and he might break through into the first team, and and do something, have that impact. But again, I won't be surprised if it's Ramsey. Ryan, player of the season, I have gone Leon Bailey. Just back into just be our most improved and uh, back up the words he was saying. And the young player of the season, Chuka. Uh, oh no, not Chuka. <laughs> <laughs> Kamara is Kamara, would Kamara be classed as a young player 22 yeah, close, close, 22 yeah. <laughs> yeah so I'm going by the <laughs> Kamara <laughs> <laughs> right that's tickle me um, and then Justin I, I I half thought about Bailey, but I just it's it's just his inconsistencies worries me about winning player of the year. You've got to be good all year, haven't you? So I've gone for uh Emmy Buendia to be player of the year because I think he's gonna have a busting season this year. I'm and young player of the year, young player, I've gone a little bit left field with this. I think Kane Kessler Hayden is gonna have a season to remember. Yeah, it's a good shot, to be fair. All I think Every time I see him, he's yeah. just such a good player. He's so good, yeah. Yeah, right. So the next one, Justin came up with this one. So explain it for us, Justin. Basically, it was it's, it's called the wild card. So you can basically pick anything you want. Something you think is going to happen by the end of the season. So... I'll give you mine and give you a rough idea why how it sort of explains it. So I think by the end of next season, Kane Kessler Hayden will be our first choice right back. There's the wild card for this season. <laughs> That's uh yeah, interesting. That's Big show, massive show. Because of Cash's season he had is obviously he's amazing. But I I, I I can't remember being so excited about play. Every time I see Kessler Hayden play, I just think he looks so comfortable. He's great on the ball. He gets up and down. He's amazing. You know, his, his ability, crossing ability, he, he attacks well. He scores goals as well from the right back. I, it, for me, he's an England international in the making. And I think if he gets a chance, if he gets a chance next season and he gets in that team and he plays as well as I think he could, why not? Yeah, great, great shirt. So mine is not sort of to your brief, but it's something that's going to happen this season, okay. right? I have gone for Aston Villa to get to a final in a cup competition and lose. And I've said that we are going to lose the League Cup to Manchester United. That's what I've. Not again. That's what I think is going to happen. I th- honestly, I think we're going to get to a final and I think we're going to lose. So, um, yeah, that, that's what I've envisaged happening. Hannah? I've just completely missed everything that you said because my internet went down. So, no idea what your wild card was. <laughs> mine, mine was to get to the League Cup. You don't know. Oh, OK. To Man United. Um, when we were planning for this, I wasn't sure what wild card meant. So, oh, oh she's gone. Right, Ryan, what's yours? Ryan, what's yours? <laughs> My wild card is that Stephen Gerrard will be in the mix for manager of the season. Nice. That, that's, that's good. Perfect. Isn't I like that. Perfect. I like, that. I like it. Yeah. Right, are you back, Hannah? Are you back with us? Yeah, I think I am. Um, I was Sorry, talking to myself. I was talking to myself for a minute there, saying I had no idea what a wild card meant, and therefore um, was trying to think on the spot what my wild card would be. Um, so I think I'm going to go for something along the lines of us selling um, an an influential player in January, maybe. Um, yeah, like that's a, fine. That's I don't fine. know. Um, but I, don't ask me which one. I just think 
<laughs> I just think it's going to be some like a, a player. <laughs> I'm laughing at the comments. A player who we thought was going to stay long term is going to leave in January. But I'm going to leave it at that before my, I lag out. I lag out again. I like that one, Lightens. Yeah, yeah. Lightens is a good call. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, that that one is good. Right, then the final one we've got is what we're going with is first manager to be sacked. So I have gone with Leeds. I think <laughs> I think he's I think they're I think they're gone, I do. I think they're absolutely gone. Um Justin. Yeah, it's very hard. It was very hard not to pick him, to be fair, because he's like uh, that bloke off Soccer AM, isn't he? I can't think of his name, the American guy. Yeah, um, there's the training videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Magnets, that one, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm going for Marco Silva with Fulham doing the Fulham. I just feel like that's too obvious for Fulham, surely. They've got to... I, just think, I, I think they're going to be rock bottom all season. I do, honestly. Yeah, yeah to be fair, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I can't... I can't. And, and they always all. pull the trigger, don't they? They're yeah. always first to go. Whoever's bottom, always first to pull the trigger. Yeah, but I think I, as an outsider, Lampard could be definitely in trouble. Yeah, this one's interesting, Eddie Howe. I think. Yeah, that, I think that's a good I show as well. He he's going to be one of them now where they're waiting for the big one to come in. Mm-hmm. Do you know yeah. what I mean? The big manager that that's what they're going to be waiting for. So any little stumble with Eddie Howe and he's off. Yeah. Do you think this is why they haven't signed the players that we all thought they would? Because they haven't got the manager in place to to, to attract it. Maybe, you know, can can he attract the big the big? I names? don't know because they've signed that. Is it Bot Botman? Spen Botman, yeah. I mean, I mean, he's he's a really sought after sort of centre back, isn't he? So I think they haven't signed anyone else, have they? They've done they've done well to get him, but um, I think they're just playing it steady. I do. That, that that's the vibe I think I've got with them. I just think they're just they're in no rush. Do you know what I mean? They've got absolute fortunes, and I just think, you know, it, it could all fair, go wrong if they waste a load of a dough and it start they start stockpiling a load of players. So I just think they're just biding their time a bit. Look at look at the way look like City done it. City come after us, didn't they? They come after us. They took Barry and Milner. They went after Everton. Took with you know Lescott and stuff. And then once they are done with us and got ahead of us, they went and picked on Arsenal, didn't they? Adebayor, Lauren, Nasri. Totally took their spine. And that was it then. They were next. That's when the Agueros come and the big boys come and the big managers come. And, and now they can they can sign who they want now, can't they? So, was you know, Newcastle Rubinia, was sort of got to do the same. They, they, got, they went for Rubinho, didn't they? And that was like the, the eye-opener, wasn't it? Yeah, got rid of my mate Ben Johnny, didn't they? For him. I think you know they have signed Mac Target for fifteen million as well. So you know they are they are they're doing mean business. <laughs> <laughs> Buying flops already, man. <laughs> Pana, yeah. Have you done yours or not? I can't even remember. Is she there? Or Who, mate? No, oh. Hannah. She's froze. Right, she's frozen. She's frozen. So, what I'm going to do? Right, now, have you done yours? Right. Well, that's the same as Luke, but the same as everything, haven't we? I'll, I'll put Jesse Marsh. It was out of it was out of him and Lampard. So um, yeah, Leeds, yeah. I Leeds, think Lampard I think. is in he, Lampard is in big trouble. To be fair, yeah, they'd be nervous. They'd be nervous. Definitely right. So I'm going to run through my sort of league table. Ryan and Justin and Hannah, you, Hannah, if you're still with us, you can do yours. Um, so I've gone for. Man City, Spurs, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, United, Villa in 7th, West Ham 8th, Newcastle 9th, Palace 10th. So that's my top 10. And then my bottom half is a car crash of what could possibly go wrong. Brighton, Wolves, Leicester, Everton, Forest in 15th, Brentford 16th, Southampton 17th, Leeds, Fulham and Bournemouth. What's your then, Justin? City, Liverpool, Spurs, Chelsea, Arsenal, United, Villa, West Ham, Newcastle, Palace, uh, Brighton, Leicester, Southampton, Everton, Brentford, Forest, Leeds, Wolves, Bournemouth, Fulham. Interesting. Uh, Ryan? <clears throat> right. I've got Man City, Liverpool, Spurs and Arsenal, yeah. Chelsea... Man U, West Ham, Villa, Newcastle, Palace. 11th, I've gone Leicester. Wolves in 
12th. Yeah. Southampton, Everton, Brentford, Forest in 16th, Brighton in 17th, and then the bottom three of Fulham, Leeds and Bournemouth. So we've all sort of gone for the same in the relegation zones. Um, and it has been interesting to see on this now, this live stream, where people have sort of put Aston Villa. So in the comments now, is there anyone that doesn't think Villa can get top 10 this season? Where do you think we're going to finish if we're not getting inside the top 10? Uh, what have you made of, of some of the answers then, Justin, tonight? Yeah, I think it's interesting because I think every year there's always one team that overperforms or finishes higher than everyone thinks. And there's always one team that drops massively and, and, and struggles, isn't there? And I, I, for me, those two teams this year, Wolves, obviously, I've, I've, think, I've predicted are going to have a real struggle. And I've predicted us to be the team that's... And not, not Maybe not outside, outside of our fan base, I mean. I think people, if, if I said to many fans and said, Villa are going to finish seventh, they would oh, Villa seventh, yeah, I'm going to laugh. But I do think I think we can compete. You know, it might be a season too soon. It might be, you know, we might finish ninth, tenth. You know, that's still a, a, as much as possibility as finishing sixth or seventh. But I, I, you know, it's time we back to ourselves now. We've we've had a good since we've come up. We've 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 stabilised. We've progressed. We've had a blip last year with with Jack going with the manager having to go. But we've stabilised again. Gerard's come in. He's had his six months. And I think he means business this season. I really do. I think his stance on on Chukwemeka was a real like drawing a line in the sand. And I think this this you know um, captain's decision as well has drawn another line in the sand. You know when he came in, as soon as he said, as soon as the question was asked of him, who's your captain? And he said, okay, for now, it's going to be Tyro. And I think we all knew it was going to go. But now looking, I think. You know, he's, he's stamping his, his authority all over everything now, isn't he? I like what Tyrone's come out and said. I didn't expect anything less of him. He's a he's a top man. Um, he's going to back the new captain and the new regime. So I think, looking forward, I, I think I think it, if we can't be excited before the season starts, then why do we bother going? So I think this is you know, this is our best chance we've had for a long, long time to have a real. Really good season. Yeah, and, and to be just... fair, Justin, you, you know, you, you have you did make a really good point, which has obviously made me think that we can get seventh. But you know, if you take away the standard top seven, so City, Spurs, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, United, that has been the sort of top seven for God knows how, however, you know, the top sides in the league. The rest below to get seventh, you're basically writing, you know, what you're sort of saying is Villa, West Ham, Newcastle. Whatever team, Alice, if we can't Alice Brighton, yeah, yeah. With, with this middle pack of teams here to get top seven, then there's something wrong, isn't there? Well, you're saying you're basically saying, can we finish best of the rest? Which, mm -hmm. which for, for for the last ten years has been a very good position to finish in, hasn't it? You know, the top yeah. six have generally had the wealth, have generally bought all the best players, they've generally dominated. All of the competitions, not just the league, but the FA Cup, the League Cup. So to break into that, it hasn't happened very often at all, you know, barring Leicester's amazing season. West Ham have had a bit of a go. Apart from that, I can't off the top of my head think of many teams that have sustained a real attack on that top six. So mm -hmm. seven, Leicester had a good couple of years, though. They had a good yeah, two seasons in yeah. fifth place, didn't yeah. they? But now it's, it's only last season they dropped off. Yeah. That seems to finally now be, be sort of ebbing away now. Um, yes, yeah. Lack of investment. Vardy's 35 now, so he, he's the sort of the main man for them, isn't he? So, you know, Smart, Smart that, going as well, isn't he? Smart on his way. So, yeah. so off, you know, I would argue, till I'm blue in the face, with anybody, if they want to, with, that we can compete <laughs> with West Ham, Newcastle, Palace, <laughs> Brighton, Leicester, Leicester. Justin, I'll read all these comments, mate. I'll read them all. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't you worry, there'll be a, there'll be a few. Um, right, so I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Just a little bit of like entertainment, do you know what I mean? So we've sort of predicted what we think is going to happen. We'll probably revisit it at the end of the season, um, and yeah, we'll see see how our predictions go. Um, we have got a pre-season friendly on Saturday, haven't we? So we'll have our match sort of reaction to that. Um, out on Saturday. Um, make sure you've all liked this stream as well. You can like it now while we're still talking. We have got a little cheeky episode that will be coming out on Monday. 
and that is associated with BT Sport. Up the Villa podcasts, making moves with BT Sport. So uh, that is where I went on Monday to do a little episode. Um, I can't really say anything else because I'm not allowed to. But yes, uh, BT Sport episode will be out on Monday. Um, let's just enjoy the season. Hopefully Villa deliver, which will make doing this podcast a lot easier, a lot more fun. Um, and a lot better than last season and the season before. So if we can get on a big run, have a real good season, be in the sort of top 10, uh, making moves, go deep in competitions, we're going to have a right season on this podcast. It's going to be really, really enjoyable. So let's all cross our fingers and hopefully that comes in. Uh, next week, we start our first sort of Week of content, so it will be Bournemouth preview that will be out. We'll have our predicted lineup that will be out, uh, and then we'll have our two new little concepts that will be coming out over that course of that weekend as well. So, um, thank you everybody for watching, and uh, I'll speak to you all soon. Up the villa, up the villa.